Hey everyone, I'm Erin, and this is the Cardboard Republic. We have a three on a theme video for you today, and it has been a while since we did one of those, so let me recap real quick. A three on a theme is a video where we pick one overarching theme, and then we subdivide that up into three smaller categories within that theme. For this video, we are going to be celebrating Women's History Month in March with women who have designed games. We're going to be dividing that into three subcategories, ranging from games with lots of story to games with no story. Let's get started. First up, let's start with a game with a whole lot of story. I'm talking about the Firefly RPG. This was designed by Monica Valentinelli with Cam Banks, and it was published or produced by Margaret Weiss Productions. So that's two women involved in it, which, you know, for gaming, that's pretty good. Probably more, even behind the scenes. I am super hopeful. But anyway, Firefly, the RPG, is clearly a story-heavy game set in the Firefly universe. In the game, you play, I mean, any kind of character you want. When I played it, I was an engineer who was really, really great at using contraband to build people new body parts, which is a skill that you need in the far reaches of space sometimes. I wasn't so great at other things like diplomacy, but you know what? I didn't have to be. That's why we had a captain of our ship. The captain was okay at diplomacy, less okay once he got shot at a bunch and I tried to keep cutting his arms off, but still pretty decent. Uh, we, we got by, is what I'm saying. We got by. And we told a great story doing it. If you have any interest in the Firefly universe, and I know Joss Whedon right now is a... But the show itself still stands. And if you do want to pursue that, the Firefly RPG is a great way to do so while also supporting women in gaming. Our second game, this is the one that combines the awesome storytelling of Firefly with some really, really interesting mechanics. Not that Firefly doesn't have interesting mechanics, but the emphasis in that game is so heavily on story. Monarch, our middle game, was designed by Mary Flanagan, Zara Downs, and Max Seidman, and it is all about strong women. You're playing as daughters of a dying queen. You have to vie it out with your sisters for control of the throne, and you do so by wielding power, not just in the ways that we always see in movies and TV. And there is such an emphasis, right, on creating strong female characters, but making them be strong in masculine ways. Monarch doesn't force you to do that. You aren't battling it out literally with swords and shields for the crown. You're using your influence to overcome your sisters. And okay, I mean, yeah, maybe we could have a little more like building women up instead of tearing. But you know what? Sometimes you just need to be queen. Our third game is Quirkle. So this is a strictly abstract title. It takes all of the mechanics and none of the story elements from the games we've already talked about. Quirkle was designed by Susan McKinley Ross. And in this game, you have these little wooden tiles with shapes of a certain color on them. You have to put down tiles matching one way or another the shapes that are already on the board. So if I put down, for instance, a blue circle, you can put down a shape next to it. That shape can be a circle of any color or a blue shape of any color. See, you have to kind of match a little bit, but not completely. It is a brain burner. And why it made this list is because you can find it almost anywhere. It is in classrooms all across America, at least. 
It's in major retail stores. It won the Spiel des Jahres in 2011. It is so incredibly well known and has become so ingrained in common gaming that I actually thought I grew up with this game. And I only realized when looking it up that this game didn't come out until I was in like high school. So that's how ubiquitous Quirkle has become, at least in my life. One of the reasons why I think Quirkle is such the widespread success that it is too, is it takes that classic matching game that we are all familiar with from childhood and it updates it into a way that we can still engage as adults. That is a really, really interesting concept and has been super influential across gaming. I can't attribute all of that to Quirkle, right? I mean, there have been a ton of games that have done that, but Quirkle itself is kind of a masterpiece when it comes to taking a tiny, essential little mechanic and building a whole game around it. Also, I will give you Quirkle is real fun to say. So just to recap then, we had Monica Valentinelli with the Firefly RPG. We had Mary Flanagan, Zara Downs, and Max Seidman with Monarch. That was our game that combined the thematic storytelling of Firefly with the mechanical wonder of Quirkle. And we had Susan McKinley Ross with Quirkle. A completely and totally abstract game. You could not put a story onto it if you tried. I guess maybe in some weird Flatland-esque scenario you could. But anyway, that is beside the point and probably more of an RPG than anything. Whew. I wanted to highlight this because there has been a lot of pushback that I've seen lately, again, towards women in gaming. But there's also been a lot more women I've seen getting into games and I applaud you and I welcome you to the table. Try some of these games, celebrate the women who are already in the industry and who have been in the industry for sometimes decades, sometimes their whole careers. What would you pick for these categories? I'm really, really curious to find out what are some of the games you love that were designed or illustrated or influenced heavily by women. And I think not more importantly, but just as importantly, what are some of the games that you love that have really great women in them? Tell us down below in the comments or you can find us on Twitter at Cardboard News. We are also on Facebook, on Instagram. We are on our actual website, CardboardRepublic.com. And please like and subscribe down below. If you like what we're doing here, we do have a Patreon. So you can go and support our content over there. We will have a link to that in the show notes. And we'll be back again really soon. Bye.